So, last class I have discussed about various, various types of piles. Now, this class I will discuss uh, how to calculate the load carrying capacity of the pile. So, in, in this course I will uh, mainly concentrate on this part that how to calculate the load carrying capacity of the pile, then how we will design these piles. Okay? So, that is the main objective of this course. So, give you this, these things in detail that what are the methodology available to determine the load carrying capacity of the piles and then how we will design a pile foundation under compressive load only. So, that is the main objective is the, the load carrying capacity, settlement capacity, a uh, settlement calculation and the design of the pile. That is the major part of these things, this uh, major part that I will cover in this course for the pile foundation. Okay, so, uh, the pile load carrying capacity in compression, because why it is compression? Because I will discuss only the pile load carrying capacity in compression. As uh, I have discussed that pile can be subjected to tension force or uplift or pile can be subjected to lateral force, but I will not discuss those things because that is not part of this course. So, I will discuss only the pile load carrying capacity under compression and that is the main objective of this course. So, thus that there are four ways we can determine the pile load carrying capacity. One is the static pile load formula, then pile load test data, then pile driven formula uh, or the correlation with the penetration data. That means, either SPT or in the pile the SCPT is the main thing because here I will get friction as well as the cone resistance. So, either I will get use the SPT data or SCPT data, I will use the pile driven uh, formula if it is the driven pile and uh, plate load test uh, sorry pile load test uh, uh, data also I will use. So, I, uh, I have discussed about the plate load test uh, during the shallow foundation part. So, similar to that plate load test we can conduct the pile load test also to get the load carrying capacity of the pile or the static pile load formulas. So, first I uh, will uh, use that static pile load formulas. So, that the ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile can be defined as Q is the ultimate load carrying capacity Q P U plus Q F, where Q P U is the ultimate point load resistance or sometimes it is called tip resistance. or it is called base resistance. Okay. So, that means as I mentioned that when uh, you are applying a load on a pile, so you will get the resistance from this base or the tip or you will get the resistance from the friction. Okay. So, this is the friction. So, this one is the your Q F and this is Q P U. Okay? This is from the point bearing pile or end bearing piles, because end bearing piles this Q P U is much much greater than the Q F and that is called the end bearing pile I have discussed. Similarly, for the friction piles, so this is Q F is much much higher than the Q P U. And another thing I want to say that so, when you, suppose this is the load Q u is acting. So, the weight of pile is also will act in the downward direction. Okay. So, that weight of pile will has to be resist by this two forces. So, ultimate load then you have to then the load carrying capacity that when you design a pile. So, you when you design an ultimate load carrying capacity of the pile. So, that should be the tip resistant friction plus the weight of the pile, because the this pile this has to carry its own weight. Okay. So, that is the weight of the pile w is the weight of the pile, but here that weight of the pile uh, uh, during the calculation I will uh, 
concentrate only these two part. Okay, now now in the design you have to add the weight of the pile. Okay, remember that if the pile weight is very significant compared to the uh, your this Q U Q P U plus Q F. If this weight is very significant compared to this total capacity, then you have to add this uh, weight also. That you have to taken as a pile load carrying capacity. Okay, so that's why uh, sorry you have to subtract these things because that will be your pile load carrying capacity because the because this uh, resistance also be taken by the weight. So that means the Q U will be Q P U plus Q F minus weight. Okay, so there is a correction. So that will be the minus, not plus. So this will be the minus. Okay, so uh, then uh, you have to apply the uh, factor of safety, all those things. So remember that. But these things. Uh, in this uh, all the problems in this course that I will solve, I will not consider the weight of the pile, but remember that if this weight of pile is significant compared to the, the summation of this part, then you have to subtract these things. Okay? Because your ultimate load carrying capacity should be the resistance that you are getting from these two force and then minus w because it has to be register has to be has to uh, register the weight of the pile itself so that you keep in mind okay so the ultimate uh, load resistance is i'll calculate in this way that qpu small qpu q uh, pu into ab ab is the base area of the pile and friction that means the friction resistance and the total area of the outer surface of the pile and that is the so that means here if the diameter of the pile is d then the ab will be pi d square by 4 where d is the pile diameter at the base or tip okay and here a s will be pi d l okay where l is the length of the pile okay so and then uh, i will calculate the total load and as i mentioned that if the weight is not uh, small, then you have to minus the weight of the pile. So, this is the weight of the pile, but in my all the examples, I will not consider this weight of the pile, but you keep in mind when you design this pile. But here the ultimate load carrying capacity means I will discuss about this part only. Okay? So, now uh, how I will calculate the point unit point bearing resistance. Okay? So, how I will calculate that? So, uh, this is the general expression of uh, bearing capacity C n c plus uh, sigma prime that is sigma prime is equal to the p prime which is the same or p prime both are same. So, B is the width of or here the diameter of the pile if this is, is rectangular or the square pile then width or the diameter of the pile. Then sigma bar is the effective overwarden pressure as the pile tip pile base and these are the bearing capacity factor and C is the unit cohesion is the length of the pile gamma is the unit weight of the soil. Now, uh, this part is remember that this part is very small compared to the second part because this second part your depth is uh, very high. So, so that is why the effective overwarden pressure will be very high compared to the third part. So, generally this third part is neglected. Okay? So, if we neglect the third part then we have 
the expression C n C sigma prime n q. Okay. Now, for granular soil, if C is equal to 0, then q p e u will be sigma n uh, n q sigma uh, sigma uh, prime n q and for the clay soil, this uh, q p u will be C u uh, at the base and n c. So, it is at the base remember that. So, this will be the at the base of the pile okay? and then the n c. Now, uh, so now first I will calculate that for the granular piles, how I will calculate the sigma prime n q. Because for the granular pile, now we have two, two components, the third term we are neglecting. So, we have C n c plus sigma prime n q. Now, if it is granular soil, C value is 0. So, it will be only q prime uh, uh, sigma prime or q prime uh, p prime into n q. So, now this uh, value how will calculate that. Now, I am doing for the driven piles. So, all the uh, methods that I am talking about is applicable for the driven piles. The first method that I will discuss is called the Tomlinson. In few uh, cases, you will find this Tomlinson method or in some uh, books, you will find it is um, this because this um, uh, graphs the n q value that you are taking, which is is proposed by the Barenzet's shape. Okay? So, this is Barenzet's shape. So, that is the first proposed by this uh, bearing capacity factor that, uh, uh, that I will use for this method. So, that is why it is called the Tomlinson's method or it is called the Barenzet's shape method. Okay. So, that is why uh, I am using this expression which is the common expression, but if the pile has a uh, soil has a friction angle greater than 40 degree, then uh, instead of using phi, we have to use the, the phi c. So, this is the first method that I have discussed in the next method, the Meharup solution, where also Meharup also suggested this n q value. So, this is the chart. If I know the friction angle, I will get the n q value from this chart. But the mirror of limited, this is the uh, q p u l, this is the limited mirror of also uh, put a limitation of this uh, T resistance value for the dense sand, it is 50 n q tan phi, for the loose sand, it is 25 n q tan phi. So, when you calculate the n q value and then uh, after calculating the effective overburden pressure, you will check whether this my P u is greater than uh, this one or not. If my P u uh, q P u is greater than q p u l, then we have to consider q p u l, okay? that will be the deep resistance. Then the um, skin friction. So, uh, first part I have discussed about the of uh, the deep resistance, next the Krins friction. Uh, skin friction or the friction and that is also for driven pile. Okay? So, the skin friction, so the this is the pile. So, the skin friction means the friction between the pile and the soil. So, if we have a normal stress of any, suppose this is the normal stress and say V and F is the force, frictional force. So, my f will be equal to v tan delta or mu into v. Okay, so, here, here mu is the tan delta. Delta is the friction angle between soil and the pile. So, here also this your sigma h is acting here. So, sigma h is the horizontal pressure which is equal to k times the vertical stress at that point and k is the lateral earth pressure coefficient. So, this is the lateral earth pressure coefficient. Okay? So, this uh, k I will, I will show how we will calculate this k. So, that means, sigma h into 
sigma h is equal to k into sigma v. So, your f will be sigma h into tan delta. Okay? This is the normal force and this is the friction uh, stress. So, your ultimately f s will be k into sigma v bar into tan delta. This will be also sigma h bar. So, this is the effective overwarden stress into the tan delta. And the um, and then if you multiply it with the area of this uh, pile uh, surface area, that means the A s is equal to pi d l, then we will get the skin friction resistance. Okay. Now, sigma instead of using sigma dash, we will use the sigma dash average. What is sigma dash average? Then we will take this sigma h at the half of the at the uh, middle of the pile. So, that means, if this is the length l, then this will be the l by 2. Okay? If this is the length, this will be the l by 2. So, we will take this the stress at l by 2 position and then that is the average effective overwarden pressure, because your effective overwarden pressure is increasing like this. So, this is the effective overwarden pressure that is increasing like this. So, that is why you are taking the average value, average at this L by 2. Okay. So, if you take this average, this will be at the center. So, then uh, next one is that how I will calculate the delta and the k. Okay. So, depending upon the um, type of the pile, pile material, the delta can be 20 degree for the steel pile, concrete pile is 75.75 into 5 and timber pile 0.67 into 5 and k value for the loose sand 0.5, dense sand 1 and if it is steel and concrete that we will use uh, frequently. So, this will be the 1 and 2, 1 for the loose sand and dense sand it is 2. And uh, if you have the n value also or if, if you know the phi value, then you can uh, from this chart, you can judge whether soil is loose, dense, medium or very dense. Well, the, if your phi value is 40 degree, so that means soil is dense. If the phi value is 44 degree, it is very dense. If the soil is your uh, say uh, 30 de uh, 29 degree, then the soil is loose or in very loose part if it is less than that. So, in that case you will take this uh, k value of 0.5 for the loose sand and 1 for the dense sand. So, depending upon you can use this chart where the soil is if you know the n value S p t n or if you know the phi value then we can uh, identify the which type of soil it is which is the dense or the loose. So, that is the idea of giving this chart. But there is another thing which is very important that this is a critical depth concept. Okay? So, uh, in the uh, I have mentioned that uh, your that your stress that we are talking about that uh, sigma v. Na? So, that means, here we are talking about that my this is if this is the length of the pile and if unit weight is gamma, say then the, the uh, uh, lateral stress is k into gamma into L. That is the sigma v or sigma v bar at the base or the pile base. Okay, so, that is why the average value will be the average value will be half into 0 plus uh, gamma k into L. Okay. So, that will be simple half gamma k L. So, that means, the stress which is acting here that will be the L by 2. So, this is the normal way we have discussed about the uh, stress distribution. But the researchers, uh, uh, researchers have observed that 
this stress will not distributed linearly up to the uh, up to any any depth okay so because of the soil arching this stress is redistributed so what is soil arching in the in the 12th week i will uh, discuss in detail what is soil arching because then you will find how the stress is di distributed but now for this uh, um, part that because of the soil arching this stress is redistributed and then they are suggested that this this is linearly distributed up to a critical depth after that stress does not increases this is uniform okay so that length up to which the stress increases or the stress become constant is called the critical depth so that means in that case it will not be at l by 2 because in that case if i take this part here it will be at lc by 2 okay we will take this triangular part as lc by 2 so after that it is uniform so we take the average will be this one because it is not increasing so it is it is uh, i mean uniform so we will take this average will be this one okay so i will solve a problem where you will find that so that means here it will be at the if this is the l l minus l c because this is l minus l c so this will be at the at the uniform so the average stress is also uniform or this one the same stress okay so i will solve a problem then we will find that if i consider the uniform uh, or linear variation and if i consider this type of variation where after the critical depth the stress is constant but uh, uh, different um, i mean later on the researchers have observed that um, there is no i mean guarantee that whether this soil arching will happen and this type of uh, distribution will occur so that's why in few uh, uh, researchers they uh, recommend that we use the full stress that means the first distribution during the our friction uh, resistance calculation but few uh, they have uh, 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 suggested that we should use this critical depth, depth constant, uh, concept so that means here the critical depth constant uh, concept is also recommended on the a few research, uh, researchers are also recommending that you use the full stress so i will solve that uh, that way that uh, i will consider the critical stress uh, or critical depth constant uh, critical uh, depth constant uh, concept and i will use the normal uh, full stress concept also and then we'll see how we can determine the pile load capacity now this critical length it is observed that for for loose to medium sand this critical uh, depth is 15 d and for the dense sand it is 20 d so this is the value which is recommended okay and this all this discussion that i am uh, talking about is for granular soil so this friction as the bearing okay these are applicable only for the granular soil where c value is zero so uh, then allowable bearing capacity will be the ultimate um, uh, load carrying capacity of the pile divided the factor of safety factor of safety is recommended as factor of safety is recommended as 2.5 so you can take factor of safety 2.5 to 3 like the shallow foundation so here i will use the 2.5 okay so as i mentioned these uh, things are developed for the boat pile okay uh, sorry driven pile now if the all the theories that i have discussed is applicable for driven piles and uh, for sandy soil now if the pile is the boat piles in sand have a point uh, bearing resistance is half to one third of the value of the driven piles so that means for the, for the boat piles you cannot use these values that you are getting because that is applicable for the driven pile for the boat piles you have to reduce it by half to one third so that means the um, boat piles tip resistance 
or the base resistance is equal to one third or half to one third of the tip resistance of driven pile. So, that means the Q P U for the board pile is equal to half to one third or half to one third of Q P U of driven pile. So, first you calculate the pile load capacity of the driven piles expression, then you we reduce it by half to one third. And uh, in case of board pile in sand, the lateral earth pressure coefficient can be calculated by using these expressions. And in case of um, uh, board piles, the k varies from 0 0.3 to 0 0.75, average value 0 0.5 you can take. And delta value is equal to phi for board piles excavated in dry soil. And you have to consider reduced value if the that slurry uh, is, is, is used during the excavation. Okay, or the mud that I am talking about, this slurry is used for the during the excavation. So, uh, later on you will find that uh, people uh, researchers they have recommended when you are talking about the um, load carrying capacity based on the penetration value, they are recommended you take one third of the in that in the board pile tip resistance is one third of the driven pile tip resistance, but here in between recommended in between one third to half. Okay. So, and the, the uh, next one that I am talking about the I S code. So, these two methods I have discussed one is the, that Tomlinson solution and the next one is the is the Meharaf solutions. So, and then what our I S code is saying. So, I S code remember that I S code is not neglecting this part. Okay because in other two uh, cases we are neglecting this part because it is not significant as compared to the to this part but i s code is also considering this part remember that and uh, these are the all this is summation means this is for the layer soil different layer soil you have to use the different friction resistance so this is friction resistance this is the f s part or the q s part and this is the q p u part Okay. So, this is the friction part, this is the QU part and for the driven piles loose to uh, dense sand, the K value is ranging from 1 to 2 as um, uh, we have uh, used in the similar table and for the board piles loose to dense sand, this value is 1 to 1.5. So, board pile it is late. So, here we cannot use the uh, one third or uh, T resistance is half to 1.3 up to one third of uh, tip resistance or dripping panel. No, because here we are using different k values for different uh, condition, both piles and the driven piles. So that value we are using here. So we'll get the driven piles and both piles capacity directly from this equation. And uh, this is the um, and delta is the friction angle here it is uh, uh, is code has recommended that it can be taken as a equal to phi okay and other things are are uh, so this is that your uh, this is the diameter of the pile this is the bearing capacity factor n q n gamma so how i will get n q n gamma we will discuss and this is the average uh, pressure this p d q P d q is the effective overburden pressure as the um, P d is the effective overburden pressure at pile tip. This is the effective overburden pressure at pile tip, but P d i P d i is the effective overburden pressure at the center of the ith layer. Okay, so I will I will solve one problem and then you will find how I will use these theories. And remember that that as per I S code for piles longer than 15 to 20 times of pile diameter, maximum effective overburden stress at, at pile tip should correspond to the pile length equal to 15 to 20 times of diameter. So, that means, this is the same as equal, equal I mean critical length concept okay? because I S code also recommending that you if your overburden stress 
at pile tip is greater than 15 to 20 times of uh, diameter, then you should consider that value. But it is uh, mentioned for the pile tip, then um, it is what will happen for the friction part, it is not mentioned. But it is uh, as per my uh, understanding that if the pile tip uh, overburdening st uh, stress is restricted up to the 15 to 20 diameter of pile, then definitely it should be uniform. Okay, so, that is why in the IS code also we will use this type of stress distribution. Okay. So, this value is 15 d to 20 d depending on the type of the soil. This is to your uh, if the phi value less than equal to 30 degree and this is valid for phi value greater than equal to 40 degree. Okay. If, if it is within that, you have to take the value in between that 15 to 20 d. So, that means, it is for the dense soil, it is for the loose soil. So, loose soil 15 d, loose to and this is dense soil, it is 20 d. So, I will also uh, consider this is the critical depth concept as recommended by the ice coat. Then uh, the n q factor, uh, it is suggested that the that the same uh, shallow foundation n q factor we can use and that is the is score 6403. So, this is the n q value that you have to use for the is code and this table is given for different phi values. Okay. Uh, 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 sorry, n gamma, this is for the n gamma value, n gamma value we have to use from this, this table and n q value that n q value is code has uh, recommended uh, charts by which I can uh, take a, a n q value. So, this chart first chart is for the driven piles, driven precast and cast in situ concrete piles. If the pile is driven pile, basically driven piles and driven piles in both can be the cast in situ and the and the uh, precast. So, for the driven pile we use this chart and for the board pile we use this chart. So, again here we are separately we can calculate the driven pile and the board pile. So, this chart is slightly there is a difference, but you have to use these two, two chart. If you are using uh, for the driven piles, then you have to use this chart. If you are designing a board pile, then you have to use this chart. So, then uh, uh, so in the next class, uh, I will solve a problem uh, or by using different methodology that I have discussed about um, the um, uh, two methods, basically three methods, okay, including the IS methods, how to calculate the tip resistance uh, of the pile and then uh, the friction resistance of the pile, and then uh, we have to add them and get the ultimate load carrying capacity. And remember that if you are loading uh, cell point of the pile also you have to subtract from that equation. Uh, so, that that much of load you can actually apply it from the superstructure. So, um, uh, so today I am uh, finishing this class uh, and then in the next class I will solve uh, different types of problem the pile in homogeneous soil, pile in layered soil and I have discussed only the pile load capacity for the granular soil. So, I will solve first the problems on the granular soil, then I will discuss the piles on cohesive soil. Thank you.